However, time was not on their side. On November 7, the Japanese troops formed a long line in the mountain valleys of Huangtu Ridge. The vanguard had already reached the village of Sadwo, while the rearguard units had just set out. Patiently waiting on the mountainside were the 8th route army forces from four regiments, who held their fire until all the Japanese troops were trapped before opening fire. The Japanese were caught off guard and soon suffered casualties exceeding half their forces. Pressed down in the mountain gorges, they were unable to raise their heads. The most critical blow came when Yang Cheng Wu destroyed their radio station, and the backup radio had insufficient power to establish communication with friendly forces. From morning till 4 p.m., the 8th Route Army's encirclement tightened, and if reinforcements could not be called in, Abe's entire army would be annihilated. Frantically, Lieutenant General Abe found a farmer's yard to use as his command post. While struggling with the ill-fated backup radio, he ordered officers from each unit to send liaison officers to receive his orders. No one dared to defy the orders of Lieutenant General Abe, so officers from each unit sent their representatives to his yard for a meeting. As he attentively listened to the reports on the situation from each unit on the other side of the mountain, Regimental Commander Chen Zhengxiang was also carefully observing with his broken telescope. Colonel Chen Zhengxiang clearly observed a particular courtyard within the encirclement where Japanese officers wearing yellow coats and carrying command swords were constantly entering and exiting. Although Chen Zhengxiang never boasted himself as a distinguished general or held titles like mountain warfare expert, he was a pragmatic and capable leader. He immediately realized that the place must be the Japanese command headquarters and ordered the mortar unit to come and open fire. For the 8th Route Army, heavy weapons were as rare as pandas. The so-called artillery unit that rushed to the scene had only four mortars, and both the mortars and the shells were not genuine products, but makeshift ones produced in the base. With such limited ammunition, they would typically hesitate to use them. However, this time, in order to eliminate the command headquarters, the mortar unit made a desperate decision. With the resolve to sacrifice their future needs, they fired off four shells. These four shells were not fired randomly. The first one was for ranging, the second for long range, the third for short range, and the fourth was the refined and accurate shot. The courtyard that Chen Zhengxiang had targeted was indeed Lieutenant General Abe's temporary command headquarters. Abe himself was in the main building. When the first three shells arrived, experienced Japanese officers, seeing the trajectory, immediately understood that the 8th Route Army was adjusting the firing. But it was too late to run by then. The fourth shell, like a cruise missile, exploded in a small open space in front of the main building. The accuracy of this shell can only be described as incredible. If the shell had landed slightly earlier, it would have gone over the house. If slightly later, it would have only hit the facade of the shadow wall. However, the staff officers of the brigade headquarters who had noticed the shelling were all hiding behind the shadow wall. And as a result, the shell landed among the crowd, killing all 12 Japanese soldiers who were observing it. Although Lieutenant General Abe did not participate in this collective observation activity, his position was not much better. The Lieutenant General was sitting on a bench by the doorway. And when the shell flew in, he didn't even have time to say a word before the shrapnel blossomed in front of the door. This distinguished general, who was waiting for a triumphant return to his home country, was blown into a heap of foreign objects on the spot. Although Abe was hit, he managed to hold on for a few more hours. In his final hours of life, the lieutenant general did not idle either. He seized the last bit of time and did something he believed was meaningful, framing and trapping others. Perhaps unwilling to meet his downfall right before his promotion, Abe, with his last gasps, left behind a spiteful will. At the critical moment of his life, Abe bitterly blamed Lieutenant General Kawaki Takemi, the commander of the 110th Division, for failing to rescue him, leading to his defeat. Poor Lieutenant General Kawaki was deeply affected by this vindictive act, and soon received a notice of being demoted, of being demoted and transferred. He left in disgrace and returned to his homeland with his bedding rolled up.